Game Changers is made possible by Thought I was dreaming when you said you loved me, baby Turns out I was awake, yeah, you were just lying to me Oh, I waited up all night inside my mind, but you never called Oh, although I'm not surprised, I know that you don't care at all what happened to the late night feel right? Staying up to sunrise, watch the night turn into day How did it ever come to this? I shouldn't miss you, but I wish you'd stay Oh, maybe I'm in my feelings But I miss the way your hand fits in mine Please tell me show like it you definitely have say in what you want to do and like the way you want to look and sound but at the end of the day you know a lot of the decision is up to like the producers and the, the tv people who run the show and um as great as they were at giving you so much creative freedom um you know there were a couple times where i look back on the show and i'm like wow i wish i had like stepped up for myself and said this is kind of crazy like there are a couple of hairstyles that I look back on and I'm like, I wouldn't try those now, but it was cool to have that experience. The biggest challenge for an artist is to how to merge who they are as a person, who they are as a, as a musician and an artist into a song in a way mm -hmm. that starts to create something happening, starts to create a, a sound, uh, a world of its own, you know, a feeling. To be honest with you, this is something I've literally struggled with like since I started songwriting because I just love so many different genres that it's so difficult for me to like pinpoint. Like when people ask me like what my sound is, like I, there's like eight people that I want to pull and then like it's just like it's such a, a hard thing for me. I've always experimented with a lot of different sounds and it hasn't really been until recently that I've really locked on to this edgy type of sound that Game Changer is all based around. And if there's one thing that I really don't want to let people take control over is the sound that I want to go for. So I've tried to avoid that. You know, there's definitely been people who have made suggestions and been like, you know, tried to put you in the box, but I just try to avoid it at all costs, really. <laughs> So I released a Christmas song last Thanksgiving and 
it was really cool because before we went out to Chicago and Nashville to like perform it all over the place, I premiered it to the people in my hometown to kind of give back, I guess, in a way to like my earliest supporters. You know, performing that song all across the, the country was, was really cool because I learned a lot about my sound and the way I wanted things to go in terms of like my image and my looks. Coming back home to perform it with the orchestra in my hometown was such a full circle moment because they were always just my bigger supporters. They've always had my back and have always supported me. So to go off and like jet set around the country and then to come back home and, and perform that song for them and with them was just a really cool moment. I've had the amazing honor to perform with Taylor Hicks. He offered me to open up for him and it was a really cool experience. When he really rose to fame, he was known for a lot of country. We did a song together and it was nothing like country. It was Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers. It doesn't matter if you're country or you're pop or you're whatever you are, like it's all about at the end of the day, loving music and sharing its power and the soul of music really with people. It's, it's what it comes down to. I know. Once I wrote Game Changer, it was like a huge step forward into the direction that I wanted to go sonically and image-wise as well. When we were putting together everything that we needed to, you know, release Game Changer into the world, we had to think of so many different things, including styling and, and wardrobe, and I didn't know where to start with that. Uh, like I said, I love my jeans and my t-shirts, and I will stick by those, but that you can't do that, unfortunately. And it's actually great though. It's great because it's really fun to pick out new clothes. As, as I've learned, it's very fun to pick out a whole new wardrobe and look for yourself. Somebody who was really, really important to that whole journey was Lindsay. She was the stylist that I met out in Nashville who uh, styled the Game Changer single photo shoot. And she and I sat down and one of her biggest things was to figure out who I was instead of trying to recommend looks for me or styles. It was she would ask me, you know, where, who I looked up to, you know, uh, what artists I loved and their vibe. And that was huge for me. That was amazing because not a lot of stylists do that. They have what they have in their head and what they think would look good on you. And they, you know, they give you the clothes to try on. But with Lindsay, it was different. She really took a totally different approach to it. Well, I feel like she was introduced to, to the world on a television show. So they were trying to create a certain image. And so it was really important to sit down with her and, re and talk about who she wanted to be and who she is, not who they were maybe like glamming her up to be, or, you know, things were probably a little bit more flashier because you were on a stage and they were, it's a TV show at the end of the day. So I think it was important to just sit down and say like, who are you? Who do you want to be? So after coffee, I decided to put together some imagery of like, of what, what I kind of was thinking after, after we pow out about it. Yeah, cool, <laughs> excited to see. So I feel like, an essential is that staple leather jacket. Yes. So we need to nail that. Um, and then after talking with your team and how Game Changer kind of like, this graphic print evokes kind of like that emotion, totally. that Game Changer emotion. I just love making people feel like the best version of themselves. It's really important to me that, you know, especially like they're not playing a character. This is a part of them, especially an artist it needs to speak to like who they want to be and who they want to introduce to their fans. So it's really important to figure out what that voice is and still be yourself while still dipping your toe out into like, you know, a little bit of a fantasy world. I love everything you chose. You did such an amazing job of pinpointing like my style, like right on. Aww, oh my God, so happy. I'm so excited to, to, to go through all Teamwork. Of yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I came to John Paul today to sit down and have a makeup and hair look done. And uh, over the past couple months, I've met with a lot of new stylists and makeup artists and have gone through a ton of different looks trying to figure out which one I liked best, especially because there's so many options when you meet new stylists, they have their own ideas of what could be cool. Met with Rachel, my stylist and makeup artist for the day. She was amazing. We sat down and went back and forth with uh, kind of what we wanted to try and achieve today with the look, which is this look today. It's kind of a soft glam, you know, a little bit of a curl. She's very cute, um, but we kind of sat down and talked about this look and it's a really cool experience to experiment. My background in music, I went to a performing arts high school in Wilmington, Delaware called Cab Calloway School of the Arts. And with working with tons of musicians and musical theater and band, and image is everything for those people. So making sure that their image is a direct representation of where they want to go and where they plan to be is important. The look that I'm sporting today, it's kind of like a festival look, kind of a little bit more trendy, gives um, gives a little bit more life to the hair. You know, you have that classic 
wave, the curl going on, but you also have the, the texture and the spunk side of it, just to give people a little bit more of a, like, yeah, I wanna try that. It kind of brings people out of their comfort zone a little bit. I think the most important thing when creating someone's style is taking their, their life into consideration, you know, how they act with you, how you interact with each other, what they're looking for in terms of cut, style, color, kind of bringing out their more creative side as well. It's like teaching them, it's like, oh, I don't really know how to curl my hair. It's like, oh, good, let me show you. Let me show you how to recreate that salon feeling outside of the salon as well. When I was on American Idol, I was very young, so I had a lot of adults around me and people who knew what they were talking about. And I was so young that I just assumed like, oh, they're just gonna, they're gonna tell me what the look is gonna be today and I'm not gonna have to, you know, put my two cents in. I'm just gonna let them do what they do because that's what they do best. And uh, when I came off the show and I, you know, got a little older, I started to realize that I can't just wear jeans and a t-shirt every single day, um, even as much as I want to. I, uh, so I started to get into styling and like, and. Um, what it all means to create an image in a brand. And I realized I could not do that by myself because I'm still a 20 year old, but when I started this process, I was 16, 17. So I still had a lot to learn about the way to present yourself to the public. And so the responsibility of finding a team of people who are wanting what's best for you and they know what your vision is, is super important. It's very hard to find the right people because you have to not only connect with them on the business side of things, but as human beings, you have to find the right people to surround yourself with. And um, it's a long journey, but I've met a lot of amazing people over the past couple of years, especially during COVID. I feel as a person, I've grown up a lot and matured a lot, but also my look and my style has changed dramatically. I feel like I've been able to kind of sample looks from a lot of different stylists that we've we've run into or my favorite artists I've taken inspiration from and kind of created a more mature look, a more sophisticated, edgier type of vibe. But at the same time, I still want to stay really youthful and energetic and bubbly. And so um, I think we've been just trying to figure out um, that type of look and what that all means. So makeup for me is about bringing out people's inner inner youth, making sure that you're reflecting how they feel on the inside, on the outside, but also keeping it so that, like the look we did on Madison today, keeping it so that it's sophisticated, but it's also still young and still fresh, making sure that there's the maturity side of it as well. I've performed live for so many years of my life, and I've gone through a lot of different stylists and makeup artists and worked with so many people. But unfortunately, it really all boils down to how well you connect with the person like and they they have to be on their game because they are the last person that you see before you go out on stage because they're there touching you up, getting you ready to look your best for the first moment that you walk out. If they're not on it or they don't really understand what's going on or it's chaotic, it kind of gets in your head and you're like, you just don't feel stable and it could really affect your show or your performance. So I've learned that it's very important to choose the right stylist because their personality and how well they are there for you and like on it is really important to how I perform. So I need somebody that's kind of like me, very bubbly and, you know, like just ready to have fun and very encouraging. And actually Rachel at Jean Paul is literally perfect. She's like me in all so many ways. And she would be like my hype person before going up on stage. Oh my gosh. What's it like to work with Madison? She is a light, you know, um, just knowing her for the short time that I have is she really has that really great energy about her. Um, she brings a lot of um, intuition to it all. She has a really good eye for everything. So it's nice to be able to work with somebody that's got the, the same focus and the same goal that you have, you know? While I was doing the photo shoot for the single for Game Changer, I got to work with some really, really fun, incredible um, stylists and makeup artists. I worked with Meg, who did my makeup, and Tyler, who did my hair. And uh, it was really, really cool to work with them because they had so many experiences working with other artists. And they brought a lot of that to the table when we were doing the, the shoot and trying to figure out what looks we were going to do. I sat and I talked with them about the song and the vibe of the song and what I thought in my head, you know, made sense for the, the style. And they just did such an amazing job listening to me and, and what I wanted the vibe to be, um, which was a really, you know, cool experience, especially with people who have worked with so many like high up artists in the industry. It's, it's cool to have them be so intent on listening to like what I wanted. I think it's really interesting to work with musicians because I feel 
they have to represent the music that they're putting out and what their vision of that is and who they are kind of has to match. I love doing my research. I like to talk to clients prior to um, whatever we're gonna be on, whatever kind of set we're gonna be on, a red carpet that we're gonna be on because I get a little bit of their personality, where they are and where they wanna be. And then I get to put like a directional mood board for them personally on what it's gonna take to get them there. Whether we need to add extensions or whether we need to do a wig or just change their look completely from where they were. And that way it makes the client comfortable and it also gives them a complete trajectory of where we're going. So I get to take like what I feel like her brand is from what I've seen on her Instagram and social media and put something together that I think would be curated for her where she still feels comfortable, but she's also like branching out into something new. I always used to dress in a lot of layers and like it was always like really like jackets and then jeans and leggings under the jeans and like everything. And so for a while I struggled with like being able to just um, put together like a outfit that looks put together but not like too much. Um, so I'm really excited to try out like different ways to um, kind of spice up my outfits and make yeah. sure that they're like colorful because I always wear black. I need to wear less black. I'll work on adding a um, little more color. Yes. <laughs> just need that little nudge. Just, just a little, little bit. Little I know. Push. And I'm going to nudge you into like shorts yes. and a skirt. I know you like to cover up sometimes, but <laughs> yes. you know, yeah, you look really. great. Oh, thank you. She's a beautiful human and she has such a, a really happy, calm energy about her. And I think that you want to pull through not just what you see and meet immediately, but also like there's more behind that too. And I just want to know that someone is comfortable and really secure in how they feel. I think that is huge to connect with the artist and find what resonates with them. I've always been really aware of not like dressing them up to, you know, in a certain theme or, you know, going to a certain place that doesn't feel authentic to them. I wanted her to be comfortable with me because it's such a personal relationship. I feel like our job is, sometimes I'm a psychologist on a certain day, sometimes I'm a wardrobe, you know, it just depends because it, it's such a close working relationship. Maybe it's a layer of a bustier under a shirt, you know, instead of like just covering up kind of like accentuate yes. the parts that you're proud of um and also like mm -hmm. i know you love like a vintage shirt and maybe it's not not like mm -hmm. with a with a ripped up jean because it's so rock and roll like just think about po more polished separates to put a vintage you know do it with suiting or a tailored pant um trouser so it doesn't feel so rock and roll it feels like pop still and modern yes i love it i love that little dress with the blue oh, yeah. that's one of my favorites <laughs> you can pull that off yeah <laughs> <laughs> we still have like the elements of rock and roll. There's like a leather jacket, but maybe there's less distressed jeans and it's a little bit more polished and modern to take it more of like a pop direction. I actually love doing this. It's one of my favorite things to do is like a little bit of a rebrand, even if it's a major rebrand or a semi rebrand. I feel like artists go through that like every two to five years, especially when they're younger. And so with her being 16 and now she's 20, she needed something that was a little bit more like grown up and made her feel like what she felt like. That way when she like looked at the music video or looked at the cover album, she felt like she was 20 years old and like moving into a different part of her career. Last night I looked at her Instagram and I looked at where she was and I saw a couple of different things, but I knew that she was really into like barrel curls. And then I saw a lot of straight hair. And so I wanted to incorporate kind of both of those and go for more of like a tossel, like Victoria's Secret, bigger, to make her feel still comfortable because I know that she likes curled hair, but a little bit more grown up, a little bit more like badass, if you will. I wanted to incorporate both of those and give her a few moments. That's why I'm staying today. That way we can do like a second look, but it'll give her a few moments where it makes her feel and look so much more modern. You know, she's 20 and she's growing up in front of the camera, but she's not 16 and she's not 30. So just to try, try to find the like right groove um, which I think we did here today, and I'm excited for everyone to see the looks. So I sourced a few looks that kind of like were in the mood board, so you could yes. see them, touch them, see what we feel like yes. drawn to. Um, I tried to find like that kind of game changer, like vibe, like a twist on, you know, checkers, or um, which I thought this could be fun with like leather pants I love or. That. Oh my god, I love how like it's mesh. You know, like yeah. is that what that's yeah. called? Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> it's super cute, and it's not just checkered. It's like a weird. Like a twist Add, on it. Yeah, it's yeah. super dope. I love that. Um, and I thought this was fun and added a little collar just to like switch it up. Yes. Um, maybe back to like a leather, like trouser, high waist trouser. And then here are like the staple leather jackets. Oh, 
So we'll try and see like which silhouette, like this one's more of a cropped style. Um, this one's a little bit longer. This is less of a biker, you know, there's right. just so many different styles. So we should see like where they hit your hip and how we like, you know, the silhouette on you. This, oh, this. She's cute, look at the blazer. <laughs> and a little matching <laughs> skirt. A little matching skirt. A little bit of oh Blair Waldorf. Yes, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, there's just, here's that like romantic sleeve again, but this is a little bit of like a sassy corset. I love that shape of that, it's beautiful. Good. So that's the vibe. Oh, and I know you love that corset a white shirt with a leather bustier kind of look. Yes. yes. A little I sassy, it. but a little business. Yes. yes. A little, a little might out. Might out. I feel like you're going to look so good in it. Oh, I'm so excited. That's already my favorite. <laughs> I've always really kind of dressed in layers and like dressed down and like haven't really wanted to be in bright colors or, you know, like try different things that are outside the box. And Lindsay, um, you know, she really gently pushed me into, you know, some new ideas that I might enjoy and they ended up really turning out to be awesome and things that I never would have picked up for myself in the store um, that I ended up like, that are my staple pieces in my wardrobe now. And so um, it's just kind of crazy because she has, you know, she sees what the stylist sees what you can't really and they, they want to help build on what you already have and uh, she just did a, a great job all around it. It was great. Yeah, it was just, I never realized really how much effort it takes just to, just for the clothes themselves. Um, but it really takes a village and, and Lindsay just nailed it right on the head. She was great. She, she was awesome. She really got it. I've been shooting for a lot of years, 800 plus album covers, and I uh, just love what I do. Love working with new artists, established artists. I just, I love being a photographer. Russ was really like the genius behind this photo shoot because he just saw things in our shooting location that, you know, they would just look really weird if you try to take them like on an iPhone and just you stand in there. But with the way he must have like lit it or whatever he did, it just looked incredible. Like the first shot we tried was outside and there were like these three gold bars and I had to stand on this like box in water and balance and like hold the beams behind me. It was so weird. And I remember thinking, I was like, how is this, this is gonna look right? Like I feel all sorts of weird right now. He ended up showing me one of the photos, literally like the raw unedited photo from that and it blew me away. I was like, there's no way. And it was so crazy cool to see that first photo. It felt like all of the years that I've been working towards, you know, this goal of just being an artist was, was they were starting to pay off. Let's make beautiful photographs, as many as we can in the time that we have. So I come in here, I start looking for little kiosks and things that I can do. I'm not thinking lens or lighting or anything. I'm just thinking setups. Then you work with hair, makeup and wardrobe and just take it a shot at a time. And like our first shot with, with her is just, you know, we were, 10 frames and we had three album covers. So, you know, it's just like shooting fish in a barrel after that. Two frames into the first shoot, I saw this look that she had that was her, you know, just this killer look. That's amazing. And then we'll do variations of that, you know, with lips open a little bit and, you know, make sure you get a few smiles, but you know, people have their, have their look. So you just kind of watch the artist and you're looking through the lens and you know, you've got a team of people knowing what you've got to get, but you know, I'm still on the button, so I got to make sure I capture it. There was another one where I was like in front of a plain white background and I was like, okay, this is just going to be like the basic or whatever. I look at the photos and they look like a magazine photo shoot. Like I don't understand how he does what he does, but he just creates magic. It's amazing. Photos are just getting better and better. The detail is getting even more detailed. There's certain products that I have to essentially purchase to make sure that those details are cleanly swept in a photo. So there's HD powders, there are different specific foundations based on who you're working with, what, they, what their needs are essentially. You wanna make sure that they're met entirely. And I think that that is a huge factor into making sure that someone is comfortable with the look that they're in. I feel like hair makes a major difference to an image because a lot of times hair tends to be overlooked. They'll get a makeup artist, but I really love it when the makeup artist and hairstylist can work together and complete the branded look that they're really wanting. Because I feel like you can have amazing makeup, but then if you just don't have time for hair, if they do their hair themselves sometimes, it doesn't transpire into the video or the photo shoot or whatever that is as much as what they would have desired it to be. With the looks that she's gonna give me, 
How do I want to light it? I like to keep the subject moving. I keep moving, try different lenses until you find the perfect angle, the perfect lighting. With Madison now at her age and the camera presence that she's got in the practice and kids growing up with, with an iPhone, I mean, they're, they're camera ready, they're camera savvy, they're, it's, it's crazy. I let them move. I don't pose them. I let them do their thing. And then I watch for those. I watch for those frames. And with digital photography, you can shoot 10 frames a second. So there's no reason to miss an expression. You know, you've got it. And then it's like, let's change clothes. Is it a gap ad look? Or is this this kind of 90s kind of rock and roll? Are we shooting wide angle? Are we shooting beauty shots? She had worked all of that out. And I just had to photograph it and light it and let her be herself and me do what I do. So we did four beautiful setups and probably shot, I don't know, five or 600 frames. And I think she blinked one time. <laughs> that's not, those aren't bad numbers for sure. And that's what we did. There were just beautiful images other than one blink. Not, <laughs> not too bad. <laughs>